when children do the leaving cert at the age of you know 17 or 18 uh, the only thing that they are examined on is their academic ability or their ability to regurgitate and a lot of facts and that's the only thing it's a very fair system and all of that but as you get older the things that attract employers to you or things that make you successful in business very often have very little to do with how well you did in your leaving cert or even whether you got a 2-1 or a first or a 2-2 in your degree they have very much to do with how you uh, project yourself, how you communicate. Uh, they have very much to do with how you can impress people, how you market yourself in a sense. Um, and it is those personal qualities very often that can make the difference uh, as between um, a successful business or you know, the achieving of, of, a, of a particular uh, career aim. And I think as well as, as, as you get older and you mature a bit, you do see the value of networks. Uh, because even though we live in a much more egalitarian society than would have been the case maybe 20, 30 years ago, where who you know and what, you know, not what you knew was, 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 was very important, I still, think that, um, I still think networks are critical. Because if you look at anybody's you know, business biography or whatever, you can see that it was a chance encounter, an event, a conference, meeting somebody which led to meeting somebody else that actually um, you know, achieved a, a, a particular goal. Whether we like it or not, the people are attracted to certain kinds of people um, and there are certain kinds of people in terms of even their personality that people want to employ and people want to be with. And that's the value of putting yourself about and joining networks because those networks will open up obviously your range of contacts, uh, but also uh, open yourself up to uh, much wider experiences, a much wider um, grouping of people who have the potential to give you opportunities somewhere down the road. I think it is definitely something that you can, that you can work on. Uh, when I was a child, I was incredibly shy. I wouldn't pick up a telephone. I wouldn't ask for something in a shop. I was shy. I, I had a speech problem. You know, I, I was just, I mean, I was the quietest child in the class. And I remember at a certain point in my probably mid-teens, and I remember a moment I was sitting on the wall outside school one time and something happened, I don't know. And I remember saying to myself, you know, Emily, this isn't getting you anywhere. I had a really deep sense that my, my shyness was, was an impediment. Now, I can still be shy. I know I don't come across like that, but, but I can be. And it takes an effort of will sometimes to put myself into, into certain um, situations. And sometimes you almost have to act a part you know, you almost have to say, OK, I'm a shy person, but I'm now going to come across, you know, as a confident person and, and, and all of that. And after a while, you actually grow into the role. Um, so I, I am a living example uh, of somebody who, um, who did very consciously work at it and who put myself into situations that were difficult. It was a journey, but it was also, it was also very much my journey. It was down to me because, again, it's something that I try and instill in my own children, that ultimately it is only yourself that is going to make that progression, dig yourself out of difficulties. And everybody, your mammy, your daddy, your friends, they can all sympathize with you. But ultimately it's you who has to get your mind set to do that.